Anderson's continuum is comprised of three stages and is based on the assumption that professionals will be involved in some amount of consultation with others for the duration of their career. The continuum mandates that the amount and types of involvement of those consultative relationships change over time. As the degree of control from the supervisor decreases, the participation of the student increases. One thing that's important to note, however, is that none of the stages are time-bound. Depending on a number of personal and professional variables, which will be explained in more depth later, some students may begin their first clinical experience well beyond the first stage and others may never reach the third stage. Anderson's continuum has important implications for SLP students during their graduate programs and their clinical fellowship years. Let's briefly discuss why this module is important and relevant to supervisors and to those who wish to become supervisors. Throughout this series, you have learned a great deal about many different themes and topics of clinical supervision. Within each module, there have been opportunities to learn new evidence-based practices for supervision in speech-language pathology, covering topics ranging from the provision of feedback to supervisory accountability. Now that we have covered so many different aspects of the skills and knowledge it takes to be an effective, successful supervisor in this field, we are ready to tie all of the information together so that it can be readily applied in your clinical setting. This module is designed to challenge your ability to respond to novel and complex clinical situations. Ideally, your responses will incorporate your academic, experiential, and clinical expertise with concepts and skills you learned from various modules. There are six key instructor influences, which are consistently associated with increases in critical thinking skills in the research literature. They are creating opportunities to think critically, effective questioning, modeling, repetition, reflective processing, and planning. We'll look now at these strategies and how you can use them to boost each of these influences. Clinicians that take on a supervisee have dual roles in who they must be accountable to. They must simultaneously uphold their duties as a service provider and one as a clinical educator. This module will assist supervisors in better understanding how to balance the welfare of both the client and the learning process of the students they take on so that all participants feel safe, fulfilled, and appropriately coached. Furthermore, this module will make clear the different agencies, documents, laws, and guidelines that a speech-language pathologist is accountable to both as a practicing clinician and those specific to the role of supervisor. This systemic breakdown of accountability is meant to illustrate the network of legal bodies that those within the profession are legally bound to and will help to make apparent what may be common information to the supervisor and the subject of a lot of confusion to the supervisee. Let's briefly discuss why this module is important and relevant to supervisors and to those who wish to become supervisors. Depending on the clinical environment in which you provide services or the types of students you wish to supervise, you might be wondering what there is to gain from learning about other settings. For example, if you work in an off-campus site supervising second-year graduate students, you might question the benefit of reviewing best practices for the clinical fellowship. After all, second-year students and CFs have different levels of clinical experience and the expectations and objectives of each placement are quite different. What will hopefully become apparent as we discuss each setting is that there are countless universal concepts and principles that can be adapted to fit your unique supervisory practice alongside Anderson's Continuum model of supervision. A quick note about Anderson's Continuum. For this module, we will discuss the importance of applying it across each setting we cover so it might be most helpful to review the details of the continuum before proceeding to the next slide and to consult your notes about the continuum throughout this module. We will discuss the continuum broadly, highlighting certain concepts as we go, 
but more detailed explanations will be found in previous modules.